conventional wisdom tells us that if you want to get strong, you have to lift heavy weight for low reps. And if you want to get big, you have to lower the weight and increase the volume. But today, we're going to look at a recent study that shed some light on whether this is true or not. My name is Zan Barksdale, and this channel is all about helping you look, feel, and perform like an athlete. So if anything in this video you find interesting or helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe if this is your first time here. Let's go ahead and get into it. I try my best to stay up to date with the latest scientific studies when it comes to nutrition, training, or sports performance. But it can be overwhelming trying to search through scientific journals each month. And when you do find something interesting, it's usually written by scientists and researchers for other scientists and researchers, which can make it very difficult to understand. And that's why I bought a lifetime subscription to Mass. The guys over at Mass do all the heavy lifting for you, pun intended, by going through all the scientific research each month and then simplifying it for you so that anyone can understand it. If you're into evidence-based fitness, nutrition, and training, this is an absolute no-brainer. If you want to check it out for free, all you have to do is follow the first link in the description and you can download their most popular articles. This study was conducted by Kubo et al. with the purpose of determining which rep ranges are better for strength and which rep ranges are better for hypertrophy. The authors hypothesized that lifting heavier weights at lower reps would be better for strength gains rather than lifting lighter weights for higher reps, and that muscle hypertrophy would be maximized by lowering the weights and doing more reps versus heavier weights and fewer reps. This study used 42 young, healthy men who had not been in any sort of resistance training program for at least a year prior to starting this program. They were all tested in two categories before and after the study. Number one, their one rep max on the bench press, and number two, their muscle pec volume, which was measured by MRI, which is the gold standard for measuring body composition and muscular increase. Then they were split into four groups and each group trained two times a week for 10 weeks. The first group would do seven sets per workout using their four rep max. The second group would do four sets using their eight rep max load. And the final group would do three sets using a 12 rep max load. The purpose of this is to equate the load volume between groups, which is load times sets times reps. The final group was a control group that did not lift at all. Now, because all the participants were untrained, the researchers wanted to use the first three weeks as an onboarding period, so all groups would train three sets of 10 twice a week for the first three weeks, and then weeks four through 10, they would use the rep range that we just mentioned before. If the participants were able to complete every rep, they would go up by two and a half kilograms for their next workout. If they were not able to complete all the reps, the weight would remain the same. Now, before we get into the results of the study, there are a couple of things that I wanna clear up. Throughout the study, the researchers used the term four rep max, eight rep max, and 12 rep max, but I think it would be more appropriate if we just said sets of four, sets of eight, or sets of 12. Everyone who's ever lifted before knows that if you're truly using a weight that is your eight rep max, you may be able to get it one time, but you're definitely not going to be able to complete multiple sets in a row using the same weight. This may only be a slight difference in terminology, but I do think it's important that we clear that up. Number two, all studies like this use untrained lifters, and it's expected that they're going to gain size and strength much more quickly than someone who's an advanced lifter who has an older lifting age. To me, like a lot of studies, this one would have been more interesting if they used more advanced lifters who had a previous history of lifting weights regularly. Now, there were some interesting results, so let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the strength gains made by the participants. All groups experienced increases in their one rep max on the bench. However, the groups performing eight and four reps saw significantly greater strength gains than the group performing 12 reps. While the group performing 12 reps did see strength gains, this study provides more evidence that if you want to focus on your strength, you probably want to focus on lower rep ranges. All three groups also experienced similar increases to their pec muscle volume. However, in the group performing 12 reps, there was a direct relationship between the strength gains and the muscle hypertrophy. So the, the participants who gained more strength also gained more size. To me, the main takeaway of this study is that muscle hypertrophy can happen over many different rep ranges. You don't have to stick strictly to six or eight reps like the magazines in the past may have had you believe. There is definitely a time and a place for training with lower rep ranges, but there's also a time and a place to train with rep ranges up to 20. 
If you're trying to prioritize strength gains, then yes, you probably want to lift heavier weights for lower reps. But if your goal is to increase the size of your muscles, this study does provide more evidence that that can happen over a wide number of rep ranges. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I want to say thank you for sticking around and watching to the end. Please do me a favor, smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're not already, and leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this video and other videos like this. And I will see you next time.